and the drugs dealers in Guyana is senior police officers. The drugs dealers in Guyana is GRA senior officers. And they're all oper operating under instruction by members within the PPPC government. Guyana's Vice President Barack Jack Dale shied away from confirming whether a tanker filled with crude oil was indeed heading to its territory. At a press conference this afternoon in Guyana, Jack Dale was questioned by Guyanese reporters about it after the Ministry of National Security in Trinidad and Tobago revealed that a tugboat named Solo Creed was towing a barge carrying crude oil from Panama to Guyana. First, they didn't know anything about it. They were trying to find out from us whether the vessels came to Guyana, so I'm not sure. But even if they're destined for Guyana, any vessel from any part of the world destined for Guyana could, could, could topple over, could sink, and then create problems anywhere in the world. Today's Daily Express editorial noted Guyanese authorities have confirmed that the vessel was expected in Guyana, but never arrived. The editorial in today's Daily Express here in Trinidad has also indicated that the mystery continues to surround the ownership of the tug and barge, its behavior on its journey to Guyana, and the identity and fate of its crew. This is not between me and the Mohammed. This is bigger than that. Why the finance the protest and so? They all know who is the shipping company owned by. They all know where the container was packed in whose yard and who are the people working there and packed the container. You hear what he's saying? But none of those persons were arrested. None of the persons who packed the container were arrested. Who would want to put money into bringing chaos in the country? Or why would one want to do that? Yeah, I gotta learn the game. And the game gonna become reality for you. You gotta learn the game. The Belgium counter anti narcotics people say that they're tracking this thing since in Guyana. And they're tracking this thing since it left the supplier from wherever in South America. The affected area has now widened moving into Grenada's territorial waters and the Spice Island has in turn contacted the Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency and other partners. It is also noted that the slick is approaching Venezuela's northern marine territory. Why the president and the vice president so interested in Dubai? Y'all ever wonder? Because the cocaine that's shipping through Guyana, it's going to Dubai. Y'all didn't know. Now you know. Yes, and you heard it from me. No one else have this information. Yeah. When pressed for more information, Vice President Jack Dale did not seem to know that the vessels were indeed on their way to Guyana. So Nobody figured out yet who is the person that Coretta McDonald was talking about that would pay the teachers, if they ain't get the demo strike, nobody figured out yet. They see the videos where the teachers are in Mohammed Gary back. The GRA office is the person who, who shipped the cocaine. All the GRA officers did was put out the seal. The custom broker who processed the documents, he got locked up. But I want you to understand the PPPC government, the police in Guyana, Kanu, Mr. James Singh. Kanu did not arrest the men who packed the container. Well, you still didn't get your ticket? This flight takes off every single day. Tap that subscription button. Thanks. I wrote, I wrote this article when this happened in 2020. Published it to my Facebook on November 16, 2020. I sent this article to all news agencies in Guyana 
and everybody refused to publish it because they all were fearful. They were all fearful of the information that I put in this article. Because this article clearly tells you who are the drug dealers. And the drug dealers in Guyana is senior police officers. The drug dealers in Guyana is GRA senior officers. And they're all oper operating under instruction by members within the PPPC government. Now let's go back to the top before I give you all the second part. I clearly said that is 11 tons of cocaine. Now let me let me put that all in a nutshell. 11 tons of cocaine, 11.5 tons of cocaine getting shipped out of Guyana. The Belgium counter anti narcotics people say that they're tracking this thing since in Guyana. And they're tracking this thing since it left the supplier from wherever in South America to reach into Guyana and pass through Guyana. And they said to track it all the way until it reached the Belgium. First question. Why haven't Kanu, why haven't Mr. James Singh, why haven't Mr. Ropes and Ben reached out to the Belgian prosecutors and asked them, can you tell us who are the people? Can you provide us with some form of, provide us with the surveillance information that you have so we can make the necessary arrest of these persons if they are Guyanese living in Guyana? They all know who is the shipping company owned by. They all know where the container was packed in whose yard and who are the people working there and packed the container. You hear what he's saying? But none of those persons were arrested. None of the persons who packed the container were arrested. None of the, 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 the owner of the shipping company they couldn't even find him. They couldn't even find him. But this person, who the owner of the shipping company, is a known drugs dealer and shipper of cocaine out of Guyana. But he still has an export license. Now, I said something to you called trustee agent. When a person or a company does constant shipping and, 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 and exchange of goods across out of Guyana, and they have to deal with the GRA, they establish a status called trustee agent, whereby they are allowed to pack whatever they want to pack in a container or whatever they're packing it in. And GRA would not be there to inspect and check it or anything. The customs officers would then go with the seal, they have a special seal. They would go, the container don't pack. Obviously, they can't say, oh, pack it back everything. It's a trustee agent. It's a trustee agent. They must pack the container where they live in. Pack it in a backyard. Pack it in a dam some way. You understand? And then the GRA officer comes, just look at the end when it finished packing. Everything they need. And he puts on a special seal. That's all the GRA officer did. But the GRA officer was locked up and accused of shipping the cocaine. They all know who is the shipping company owned by. They all know where the container was packed in whose yard and who were the people working there and packed the container. You hear what he's saying? But none of those persons were arrested. None of the persons who packed the container were arrested. The GRA officer is the person who shipped the cocaine. All the GRA officers did was put on the seal. The custom broker who processed the documents, he got locked up. But I want you to understand the PPPC government, the police in Guyana, Kanu, Mr. James Singh. Kanu did not arrest the men who packed the container. He didn't arrest them and question them. Kanu did not. Well, they didn't even find him. I think it's Jomo, brother, or whatever is his name. They didn't even find him, the owner. 
of the shipment shipping company. I don't even know where he is right now. And if he has surfaced, why hasn't he been arrested? If he has surfaced now. If he's dead and gone, well, my condolences to the family. But if he has surfaced now, why hasn't he been arrested? Now listen to this. This container was transported by people for the shipping company. Why haven't those persons been arrested? This container reached the wharf. And this container passed through a scanner, a multi-million dollar GRA scanner, government owned scanner. And the scanner, apparently, they first said the scanner was not working. I want, I, I'm giving you a clear picture of who the drug dealers are. You gotta listen. Pay attention to these words. If you listen carefully so far, you're understanding who the drug dealers The scanner apparently in the beginning they said it was not working so it couldn't scan the container but from probing and later investigations they found that the scanner was working and the scanner did scan and see cocaine in the container a container in a container the scanner did find it and it was the IT people who operated the scanner with instruction from the senior gov government GRA officer, Miss. The lady. The lady from GRA. Who was in charge of the IT department and in charge of the scanner. The lady. That is the drugs dealer. Because she tell the men to hide the scanning results. So she's a drugs dealer. She allowed the cocaine for pass. She see the cocaine in the scanning records and she cover it up in the system the database. And allowed the cocaine for pass. So she's a drugs dealer. She's a part and parcel of the drugs dealer. To my understanding and my knowledge, Kanu arrested her. And she cried bitter tears that she had nothing to do with it and she don't know what about it. And she cried and she cried. And while crying in her bitter tears, she laid all the blame on the customs officers who sealed the container. This, this lady for real, this motherfucking drugs dealer, PPP corrupt fucker for real. Yeah, she laid the blame on the custom officer who sealed the container. Is he shipping this cocaine? When you see the cocaine in the container and you hide the fucking records and load the cocaine for pass. Who's the real fucking drug dealer? Who's the criminal? Yeah? I'm getting, I getting worked up. I gotta stop getting worked up. I'm the ranting man, they say. I'm getting worked up. Anyway, let me continue. The cocaine left Guyana. And reached the Belgium. The cocaine reached the Belgium. Now, so far, I want you to understand... The head of Kanu, the Minister of Security, J this James Singh is the head of Kanu, the Minister of Security, Ropes and Ben, at the time or Edgil, I think it was Ropes and Ben. None of them didn't contact the Belgium counter narcotics people, prosecutors, and say, give us, share with us your information, let us see. They've been tracking this thing. Y'all yeah, been tracking it? Who transported it? Where it come from? Give us the information. Where it duck? Who exchanged hands? Where the vehicle not vehicles that were used? James Singh didn't do that. James Singh allow it to lie low because James Singh got a hand, a hand. James Singh got a hand in the cocaine passing. The minister of security got a hand. In the cocaine passing, the GRA staff and the supervisor who hide the scanning records got a hand in the cocaine passing. 11.5 ton of cocaine. Now, listen to this part now. And you see who got the real hand in the cocaine passing. Listen to this now. Let me go back to the article. I want you to understand so far who are the criminals so far. They did not arrest 
the men who packed the container, they did not arrest the men who transported the container. Right? Let me go back to the article now. Where were we? Where did we stop? Background. This part is called the background. And what I'm going to read here for you guys, I want you to ponder on this. Because you guys know or would have known or heard of some of the greatest drug dealers in the world ever. They even got songs about them. They got movies about them, documentaries about them. But today, all of those drug dealers are gone. And today, there's one even more greater than all of them. Yeah, there's one greater than all of them. And you don't even know who that person is. But you know what? That person lives in Dubai. No wonder the president and the vice president are always going to Dubai. No wonder after the cocaine get bust, the prince or sheik of Dubai catch a plane and just drop down in Guyana and go and talk to the president and the vice president and then jump back on the plane and fly out. To my understanding, the man just come to say, make sure my cocaine reach next time, don't let get stopped. Why the president and the vice president so interested in Dubai? Y'all ever wonder? Because the cocaine that's shipping through Guyana, it's going to Dubai. Y'all didn't know. Now you know. Yes, and you heard it from me. No one else have this information. In this beautiful, quiet, sometime country and place that a lot of us call home. Guyana that has been at the center of some of the biggest drug busts in the world for years and years and years. Seems like Guyana is a very pivotal part of this drug trade for more than 25 years going into more than probably 50 or more given the amount of time that this trade has been around. And then if we look around and we observe the things that the speaker was speaking about, right? Let's contemplate on some of the points that he made. They knew who the shippers were, right? It's a container full. A container full. Now, nothing stashing clothes, nothing in no little bit of food, like how people just go through the airport and them thing with a little blindy and get caught up and find themselves doing five to ten and them type of thing. You're talking big food. You're talking millions and millions of dollars. You're talking billions at this point because if you think about it it's 11 tons 11 tons not 11 pounds not 11 ounces 11 tons so that right there is not no little bit of thing to wear no regular custom office or no even a one person could really move there's more than one person's shipment that's a person or a team of people working together to make that happen right there could you imagine 11 tons and the thing is this belgium no but somehow, Mr. Kanu, in arresting nobody or doing nothing about it, but just taking the little small fish them off the road and then probably releasing them or giving them a little tap on the hand and next thing you know, they're back in the populace again. Or guess what? Sometimes they sink you and you now end up being the only person that feel the brunt of the situation. You had the least to gain from the whole situation. You had not much forget from the because guess what you playing the smallest role and you got the least invested in the could you believe a regular person working at gre would have the wherewithal to find 11 tons and be able to ship it and carry it all the way to its destination and the location independently that person alone all while being employed at the gre let's think about that for a moment because that right there don't seem like if it make much sense. You see what I'm saying? And to be honest with you, as we notice in Guyana, the big fish them don't ever really get touched. It's all the little small fries. And the small fries them is get touched. Why? Because they don't understand the key. And going back to the 48 laws of power again, it's talk about repetition. 
is everything. Guard it with your life. Repetition is everything. Guard it with your life. Meaning, the way that, the, that people perceive you to be in society and the office that you might hold, the stature that you might hold in society will make persons never think that you are capable of committing certain acts. And the image counter to that will make them believe that you are capable of doing it and you are able to do these things. A matter of fact, you're involved in the right now because you look a particular way and you fit a particular character that was painted with those attributes and taught to act in that particular way in accordance with society. So repetition is everything. Your repetition, the way that society sees you, the way that they think that you are before they even get to really know you, is most times the way in which they're gonna, gonna bracket you and put you in a group. And that's the thing. That's one of the most powerful laws from the 48 laws of power. Your repetition is everything. And it's the repetition of Mr. Kanu and all of the other bad actors in the GRA, the government, and wherever they find themselves within the diaspora to make something like this is to go down. They got to be of a certain type of ilk or at least be believed to be of a particular ilk and a particular group so that now you can do all of this and still be able to hide behind a badge, behind a position, and behind the authority that was given to you by the image and the position within which you hold in society. We ain't taking this thing serious. We're going on with this I'll spill that just happened in Trinidad, you know. Technically Tobago, but we know it's the same place. Now, I had a big I'll spill happen there just recently during carnival time in Trinidad, right? And a lot of persons ain't talking about it because they didn't realize that the ship was headed to Guyana. The ship was headed to Guyana, right? And they're talking more about it now. And then guess what? The heads of the government in Guyana, nobody ain't coming forward and really talking and saying, yo, this ship was headed here or giving the, the, um, the, the regular man in the street and the populace clarity as to what's really going on. Guess what though? In Trinidad, they know that the ship was headed to Guyana. So guess what? If a ship with all of the isles spill on you coast, but it was headed to your neighbor house, and your neighbor acting like if he knew that it was headed there, and he really um, responsible for the fact that that ship passing right by you, spill by you, and it was headed by he, isn't that kind of a bad situation? And isn't that kind of a situation that you wouldn't want to have with a neighborly, relationship that you're trying to foster with your sister country in trinidad but guess what when the people don't know they can't have no outcry right now they got people in the street striking and i think this might be a thing that i don't think every guy in is gonna pay attention to because it's just so much going on it's carnival mashamani competition all kind of thing going on for this track yeah all while there's an oil spill going on on the coast. And guess what? The oil spill gets so bad, it's already leaking over to Venezuela and Grenada. But how many of we know that the ship was headed to Guyana? Let's get into this right now. And let's hear the MP speak on the fact that the ship was headed to Guyana. And the president acting like he doesn't know this. Tobago House of Assembly and the Tobago Emergency Management Agency, FEMA. The oil slick measures some 48 nautical miles or 88 kilometers long and 0 0.13 nautical miles or uh, two, uh, 240 meters wide. The overturned linking, uh, sorry, the overturned leaking Gulf, Gulf Stream was being told by a tug, the Solo Cream. And today's Daily Express editorial noted Guyanese authorities have confirmed that the vessel was expected in Guyana, but never arrived. The editorial in today's Daily Express here in Trinidad has also indicated that the mystery continues to surround the ownership of the tug and barge, its behavior on its journey to Guyana, and the identity and fate of its crew. Ladies and gentlemen, the Solo Creed, that tug that was 
uh, leaving the vessel is yet to be located. The affected area has now widened, moving into Grenada's territorial waters, and the Spice Island has in turn contacted the Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency and other partners. It is also noted that the slick is approaching Venezuela's northern marine territory. An energy expert here in Trinidad, like many others, we have our own uh, on the panel, have concerns with Trinidad's response to this event, the Trinidadian case. One Paul Poisson said of Trinidad, we are too long at this game. How would Guyana fare with its weak institutions and overwhelming political interference? Challenge. Thanks for change has noted ongoing challenges being experienced by our neighboring island of Tobago due to the devastating effects of an oil spill. <clears throat> Media reports indicate that the source of the oil spill is a capsized barge or ship reportedly heading for Guyana. Despite the fact that Trinidad and Tobago has been an oil producing country for over a century and has dealt with major oil spills in the past, the country is still struggling to contain this recent oil spill. This unfortunate event should be an additional wake-up call for Guyana. Guyana is currently producing three times the daily volume of oil um, versus that of our sister country Trinidad at its peak, thus resulting in increased risk. It is time that Guyana puts in place a comprehensive oil spill plan backed by provisions of adequate resources and equipment, as well as ensure that operators of all our oil blocks have in place full and unlimited co liability coverage. The Tobago oil spill has now spread to neighboring countries of Grenada and heading towards Venezuela. Having in place unlimited liability coverage not only covers the costs associated with the immediate oil cleanup efforts, but will also include the short, medium and long-term costs associated with the damage to these countries' tourism and fishing sectors. The AFC will be monitoring the effects of this oil spill closely, including the final cleanup costs and associated claims. This will be a suitable comparison for adequacy or not of the current $2 billion claim to be in place. Guyana's Vice President Barack Jack Dale shied away from confirming whether a tanker filled with crude oil was indeed heading to its territory. At a press conference this afternoon in Guyana, Jack Dale was questioned by Guyanese reporters about it after the Ministry of National Security in Trinidad and Tobago revealed that a tugboat named Solo Creed was towing a barge carrying crude oil from Panama to Guyana. The tugboat vanished 11 days ago while the barge drifted upside down into Tobago's waters, settling just outside of Cove and leaking oil into the sea since Wednesday, February 7th, creating an ecological disaster. Well, first, they didn't know anything about it. They were trying to find out from us whether the vessels came to Guyana, so I'm not sure. But even if they're destined for Guyana, any vessel from any part of the world destined for Guyana could, could, could topple over, could sink, and then create problems anywhere in the world. When pressed for more information, Vice President Jack Deo did not seem to know that the vessels were indeed on their way to Guyana. So were they bringing the oil to Guyana? They were, were they bringing this oil to Guyana? That's the question for you, sir. Oh, okay. While he did not believe this was a situation for which Guyana would be held liable, Vice President Jack Dale was not averse to assisting with the cleanup efforts if necessary. 
It has become an international event, tier three event, so a number of international bodies have been um, approached. If we have any capacity to deal with this matter, Guyana's energy industry has been growing rapidly with its recent discovery of oil. However, it does not yet have its refinery. Even Trinidad was sweeping this under the rug and trying to hold this on a hush until after Carnival. It happened like right before Carnival or, you know, like right in Carnival week, right? And they held this information kind of like on the low, you understand? They didn't do no real impactful thing when they dealing with this oil spill during carnival because guess what that would have alerted the persons that came into carnival and diverted some of that attention towards the oil spill persons know on the ground i ain't taking that way but as far as big media coverage and stuff like that for this it wasn't really that and guess what they were asking for volunteers with regular people in the street to help them to clean up that toxic spill and the information is there because guess what the independent people on the ground just like we are doing right here for persons in guyana and the diaspora was sharing the information and let people know look they got a big spill right here right now during carnival nobody ain't cleaning it up and guess what we ain't see no real company that's supposed to cleaning up this taking care of it but asking we as the persons that living in the area now for come and make sure that this place is clean up and try to do what we could do to get some of this aisle off of the coast but it is so toxic that the regular man can't deal with it the regular man can't deal with the aisle spill but another time i want to ask again how many guyanese know that this aisle in this barge that spill in the ocean was actually headed to guyana it was headed to Guyana, so imagine if this had happened on the coast of Guyana. At this time with the teacher strike and with every single thing that's going on in that country there right now. Could you imagine that being an additional foolishness that you got to deal with? Just because of the negligence of whoever caused that spill right there? And guess what? They didn't find the tug yet, you know? They didn't find the tug or the crew responsible for the. But eventually, we know they gotta find them. Kaya can't just disappear off the globe. But we can get to the bottom of this because we're gonna follow this story all the way to the end. All the way to the end. Because, look, if something like this was to happen in Guyana, to be honest with you, it wouldn't be able to be taken care of in a real way. Why? Because we don't have no real experience with taking care of no oil spill. And that was just pointed out by the speaker before. Guyana doesn't even have a real budget to cover the eventualities of an oil spill of that magnitude that we see going on right there. Could you imagine that? The country that's literally one of the largest and fastest growing oil producing nations in the world doesn't have a budget and real thing set in place for a spill like that you see we set ourselves up for a serious serious problem if anything like this is to happen in guyana and to be honest with you i truly hope that something like this never happens in guyana but an oil spill goes up in the possibility of it happening with the amount of oil that you're coming in and out and in and out and drilling in and out and in and out a oil spill happening goes up with the amount of barrels that you're pumping and guyana pumping a lot of oil all the time we're making the money and we gotta put things in place right now we're gonna get into another topic that's very heavy in guyana the teacher strike now critic is saying that the teacher strike is political and it is funded by the Mohammeds, and they're doing this to make sure that they can somehow take the support of the people away from the government during an election year he's getting into a lot of information that to be honest with you a lot of persons might not see it that way but sometimes it's good for here both sides of the fence so you could now understand what's going on inside and outside because then you're going to have a holistic perspective as to what's really taking place. 
and that's what we're gonna do we're gonna listen to critic and we're gonna hear his perspective as to what he thinks is going on in this teacher strike because we know that a lot of the persons that are out there they're out there because they want better men they ain't got no time with politics and them thing but still let me hear this perspective and then we gonna gather our own because guess what Chinese people ain't stupid so let me hear right now what's going on this is not between me and the Muhammad. this is bigger than that why the finance the protest and so hello good morning Hello? Hello? Yeah. Me, is me do that? Is me set up all of that? Is vexation with me make that do that? Who would want to put money into bringing chaos in the country? Or why would one want to do that? Yeah, I gotta learn the game. And the game gonna become reality for you. You gotta learn the game. This is even more serious game than where Glenn Lal playing. What Muhammad tried to do, and when the real rift with me happen, is try to control what I see and what I do. That doesn't happen with me. I am not a smelly smell. Are a dog. Nobody figure out yet who is the person that Coretta McDonald was talking about that would pay the teachers if they ain't get the up strike. Nobody figured out yet. They see the videos of the teachers are Muhammad Gawi back. You know, one of the most um, hateful things that I see is that friends, people who value friends and loyalty. It's, in, it's, it's not possible anymore in this time and age that we live because... Well, partner, days, don't lose. Don't lose faith in friendship. I am here today because of some of the beautiful we people have, we, in we my have life. We good friends and we have some bad friends. Yes, sir. Sometimes, what happened sometimes, to the Mohammeds and they don't know is that I knew all the time. You understand? No, it's two years on. It's two years or three years on since as I didn't take a picture with me. And I didn't take likely to it. Then it's about a year and something now since he and he make the voice note talking with Stacey DeSantis about me. I didn't take too likely about it, but you know what happened? I played a long game. I smile every day with you you understand <laughs> i place class people's characters the man like talk he's talking about everything well here we're telling you i ain't talk nothing yet today i ain't talk one percent yet to one i ain't scratch the surface you understand and you know you know something guys these people are so upset that um the government has implemented that if you need to visit schools and do donations and whatnot i don't have anything against both parties the government or mr muhammad what what, what i am saying is that if he does a donation to the school go in front of the school and you take out a picture and you distribute your gift without anybody child in it because i wouldn't like to see my child being photographed collecting a gift because it'll show well, people take it all wrong in different manner. So that is my take on that. So you have a good day. Roger that. Mr. Infused Agave. The most nutritious replacement for sugar.